there's a part of the world that has resisted the reach of humanity. It is the frozen Arctic. Quite different from the Antarctic, which is dominated by a large continent. At the heart of the Arctic lies a vast frozen ocean. The icebound gate is slowly lifting on these isolated waters, where only icebreakers dare tread. According to satellite photos, taken from an altitude of six kilometers, the ice coverage over the Arctic is at its lowest level ever. Venturing into this forbidden sea of ice, a cargo ship departed from Korea in August 2009 to explore a new maritime route between East Asia and Europe. This northern pathway, a product of global temperature rise, has incited a new race. Like the maritime silk road that opened up in the southern hemisphere four centuries ago and altered the course of history, will this new northern passage bring new dreams for humanity? Sea lanes have played an important role in trade between East and West. Asian countries depend on them for the transportation of energy, relying on them for their economic developments as imports and exports travel these maritime highways. In fact, in a country like South Korea, 99% of all trade is by sea. The ocean is at the center of global trade and energy transportation. It is naturally the primary supplier of plant and animal marine resources. The port of Kamchon in Pusan, South Korea is the largest base for deep sea fishing in all of South Korea. It is connected to more than two dozen fishery bases around the world, including the Indian Ocean. We find a friendly looking seaman, Wee Shin Wan, among the group of deckhands unloading tuna. Mr. Wee is a bosun on a deep sea fishing vessel that catches tuna in the Pacific and Indian Oceans. Once he gets on board, he won't set foot on land for 20 months. For him, the ocean is his second home. After experiencing a frightful accident that he can't put out of his mind, he suffers from nightmares every time he has to put out to sea. On April 4th, 2006, Pirates in two speedboats rush toward Mr. Wee's ship and climbed on board with a ladder. The sudden attack by gunfire caused confusion among the Korean ship's crew, which became occupied by these unidentified men. Their lives were threatened and they were held for ransom. They turned out to be pirates led by Mohammed Abdi, such criminals are notorious around Somali waters. They took the ship, the Dongwon, to the port of Obia, Somalia. A 
American and Dutch naval vessels fired on the pirates to stop them. But they were unable to block their escape. The 25-member crew spent four fearful months of dreadful captivity. Such pirate attacks are attempted even now. The Dong Won departed from Busan in southern South Korea, passed through the Strait of Malacca, and continued sailing to the waters near Somalia. This was when they were hijacked by pirates. The sea lane they used is this route, the so-called Marine Silk Road. But this important maritime highway, which has been a vital link for trade between East and West for four centuries, is under great threat by pirates. In particular, the ocean near Somalia, a golden bottleneck through which one-fourth of the world's oil passes, experienced more than 200 pirate raids in 2009. Some 60% of all world piracy happens around Somalia. Somalia today is a land of anarchy. A lengthy civil war has driven the people here into abject poverty. Some Somalis, in search of quick infusions of cash, therefore set their sights on the many foreign ships that pass right in front of their noses. The effect of Somali hijackings and hostage taking has reached neighboring countries and Europe. It has become a global center of hijacking. Several attempts by the crew of the Dong Wan to escape all fail. International ransom negotiations with their captors also didn't go well. In the end, the ship was in pirate custody for nearly four months. <laughs> the conflicts in those waters have made unstable conditions for the fishing industry in these trade and sea routes. <laughs> This has forced many countries to mobilize their navies. Even South Korea, which depends almost exclusively on marine routes for trade, has decided to stand up to piracy after the Dongwon hijacking and kidnapping. The naval unit assigned to protect South Korean vessels set sail on its long journey to the Gulf of Aden. 한 명이 길목을 지키면 천 명을 두렵게 한다고 하셨습니다. 중공 이순치남 한 척이 수천의 해적을 두렵게 할 것입니다. 아담만에서 우리 선박의 안전을 확보하겠습니다. Warships from 20 countries, including the US, Japan, India, and various European nations are already in these waters to protect their country ships and those of their neighbors. Since the so-called Age of Discovery in the 15th century, this maritime highway has seen cargo ships traveling back and forth from Europe and the Far East. The route is a primary passageway of goods, as well as a gateway to fishing grounds in the Indian Ocean. For countries in East Asia, such as South Korea, it's also important, as 98% of its imported oil passes this way. It is a similar case with Japan and much of Europe. If something treacherous happens along this route, it is a threat to the global economy. 
This fact is at the heart of the efforts to search for alternative routes. From a national security point of view, it is uh, better for diversify energy uh, sources uh, uh, because if you depend on uh, one region heavily, it, it, it makes you uh, more vulnerable at the times of crisis. And we have to consider that. And uh, uh, also, I think uh, energy, the amount of energy uh, provided uh, by the Middle East, I mean, will decrease in the future. Uh, and uh, new, that's the reason why we should uh, try to find a new uh, sources for energy uh, demand, like. Uh, Russia or some other Central Asia or some other regions. Concerted efforts to find safe routes are underway. This is the port of Ulsan, the largest industrial port in South Korea. Two German ships that belong to the Beluga Company are approaching the port. The port of Ulsan is their temporary port of call. And their next destination is Vladivostok in the Russian Far East. They're delivering power plant construction materials to Russia. It is the next leg of this ship's journey from Vladivostok that attracts attention. The two Beluga vessels have chosen a northern sea route instead of the more widely traveled southern route for their run from the Russian Far East to Germany. The Arctic Ocean is a cruel sea of ice. Typical cargo ships refuse to cross it. For this special journey, the captain of the Beluga vessels was replaced with a Russian who is more familiar with the Arctic Ocean. The northern sea route, which the Beluga vessels will travel, is a dream maritime highway. Traveling from Ulsan up to Vladivostok, over to the Russian port of Murmansk, and onto Rotterdam in Holland, shortens the sailing distance between Western Europe and East Asia by one port. We will be endeavor to make everything the best. So, uh, especially the vessel is the first time. Uh, as I know, foreign vessel is the first time who has passed this one uh, road. Uh, before, it was only Soviet vessels who has all time to pass this road. So this one is foreign vessel the first time. So, of course, I have some uh, ability and some, uh, you know, uh, little bit afraid. In The two Beluga vessels have left Russia and are now sailing through the Bering Strait, the passage of water between Siberia and Alaska. What lies ahead are the rough waters of the Arctic Ocean. Guided by icebreakers, the Beluga vessels cautiously enter the formidable sea of floating ice, the Arctic Ocean. During the Arctic summer, more and more ice melts away due to global warming. A sea route normally blocked by chunks of ice reveals itself, providing a way for ships to sail through the Earth's northernmost waters. The success of the Beluga opens up possibilities for a long dreamt of northern sea route. But there is still a long way to go. Special permission is required to sail across seas with floating ice. In what I can say, the foreseeable future, at least in the next 50 years. So this standard that you mentioned is very important. And, uh, and the standard, uh, first of all, means that the ship will need to be able to go through ice, quite heavy ice. Uh, they need to be also capable of coping with drifting ice, packed ice. And uh, there must also be taken special precautions for being able to maneuver. To, to avoid, for example, icebergs, which can be very dangerous. So not only on the construction uh, of the ship has to be 
uh, looked at, especially for operating in such uh, waters, but also the operation and having adequate information about the ice formations and such. There are still many limitations to open sailing in the Arctic. Ships can travel only during the summer months, and they must be built with special materials that are specially designed for smashing ice. Despite such obstacles, the northern sea route is favored for economic reasons. The distance from the port of Yokohama in Japan at the easternmost edge of East Asia to Western Europe is 12,000 kilometers by way of the Arctic. It is 40% less than the alternative route to the south, which is 20,000 kilometers. A viable sea lane through northern waters has long captured people's imagination. The Vikings began searching for a northern passage as early as the 8th century. Since that time, many adventurers have taken up the challenge, but ultimately failed to penetrate the frozen seascape. One such explorer was William Behrens, a 16th century Dutch navigator. Amsterdam mm -hmm. they started more exactly more to the north, to Beeren Island, island of Beer. Then they went more to the north and they discovered a new land, Spitsbergen it's now called, but Willem Barnes called it also the new, a new land, the new land. And at that part they couldn't find, uh, find a way further to the north. And Willem Barnes had more the idea to going more to the east, northeast, n north of Nova Sembla. The Barons party proceeded northeast, searching for a shortcut to the east. They spent 10 months in 1596 stuck in the severe cold of the Arctic. Barons himself eventually succumbed to the frigid conditions. Despite repeated sacrifices and frustration, explorers never gave up their hope to discover a viable northeast passage. Once a northern sea route is commercialized, the port on this isolated city will thrive. This is the port of Murmansk, located above the Arctic Circle in Russia's extreme north. This city has for centuries been a crucial ice-free port for ships going in and out of the Arctic Ocean. The port was constructed for Soviet military transport and logistics during World War I and now serves as a gateway to the Arctic. After World War II ended and the Cold War began, the Soviets chose to use Murmansk as a major military base for the Arctic region. The USSR's icebreakers transported military supplies from here to Vladivostok in the Russian Far East, across the icy Arctic Ocean. Murmansk commemorates the feat of the Yermak, which sailed into the Arctic in the 19th century. It has now been transformed into a museum, but it was the Lenin that was the first nuclear-powered icebreaker and the first vessel ever to sail to the North Pole. Because of such history, Russia alone has the experience and the skill to sail the Arctic. In that sense, Russia can claim ownership of the Northern Sea route. Иностранные государства, они претендуют на 
некоторую часть Северного Ледовитого океана. Но это уже больше дело дипломатов. У нас же э, другая, может быть, не пословица, а поговорка. Да. Кто э, плавает в Арктике, тому она и принадлежит. Пока основная, основная, э, пока можно сказать, что плаваем в Арктике мы круглогодично и постоянно. In the past, this gateway to the Arctic Ocean wasn't open to the outside world. During the Cold War, the Soviet Union kept its Arctic region, including Siberia, closed off for military purposes. A speech in Murmansk by the leader of the Soviet Union at the time, Mikhail Gorbachev, marked a turning point in the opening of the Arctic to the Western world. The opening was due to a speech in Murmansk by the Russian leader in 1987. потому что порт не замерзающий. Это ряд крупных транспортных предприятий, в том числе всемирно известный Мурманский морской порт и Мурманское морское пароходство. До недавнего времени именно оно осуществляло обслуживание всех атомоходов, которые известны своими походами на Северный полюс и проводками по Северному морскому пути. Можно сказать, что город Мурманск – это сердце Северного морского пути, потому что ну, даже самый простой аргумент – если все растает, то самый короткий путь из России в Канаду, в Америку, он будет через Мурманск. Some countries quickly understood the significance of Gorbachev's Murmansk Declaration. Japan, an island country composed of a vast archipelago at the eastern edge of Asia, is one of them. In 1995, a Russian icebreaker cargo ship, the Kandalaksha, arrived at the port of Tokyo for some historically important experiments. The International Northern Sea Route Program, or INSRA, is an international co-project led by Japan from 1993 to 1999 in order to conduct research on a northern passage. Russia, Norway and Canada have all joined. Six core studies on the Northern Sea Route were conducted during a 20-day voyage in August 1995. <laughs> The ships departed from Yokohama, Japan, passed through the Bering Strait and entered the frigid Arctic Ocean. It finished its first voyage when it arrives at Kirkins, Norway. This, I believe, will not be the last expedition. We have worked so well and achieved so much. This marked the beginning of the studies of that new route. Those studies were conducted before the Earth began to witness dramatic climate change in the Arctic caused by global warming. These studies showed that the world at the Northern Sea Route was not just a dream, but a reality. So, we have to go to Oslo, and we have to go to the United States, and we have to go to the United States, and we have to go to the United States. この氷の状況というものが逐次ウォッチできますから、もう夏場については but the Arctic does not open itself up easily. 
technically it's possible to break ice and create a new maritime highway, but economic factors are an entirely different matter. え、since INSRAP came to an end in 1999, new fields have developed that are preparing for a new era based on the results of their studies. One Japanese company, a meteorological information provider called Weather News, recently set up a system to supply information on Arctic ice to ships in real time. Weather News was founded in 1986 and has provided weather services to more than 2,000 ships and companies around the globe. It is a multinational company with branches in 35 cities in 14 countries. More than 20 professional weather forecasters provide weather information on any place on Earth 24 hours a day. Recently, they opened the Global Ice Center, developing their own automated meteorological observation system. Using satellite images that are five kilometers on each side, it is able to monitor ice and the Arctic and global warming conditions around the planet, providing weather services in real time. Now, everything is in place to provide weather data to potential customers once the Northern Sea Route is commercialized. こういうルートに限らず少なくとも船会社さんの場合に限って言うならば早くて安全でエコロジカルな世界っていうようなものの ミクに航路っていうのは展開されるから固定概念に縛られることなくやっていくっていうのは我々の頑張っていかなきゃいけないしその状況を船会社さんにお伝えしながら船会社さんもこれは経済的にもイコロジカルにもメリットあるじゃ
the people of Pohang dream of making their city a major global logistical center. It will be reborn from a city of steel to a bridge between land and sea through the northern sea route. Uh, 10월에 러시아 이제 국경 최대 선사죠. 페스코와 우리 이제 교류 협력을 제대 체결을 했고 뿐만 아니라 지금 영일만항을 기점으로 해서 이제 동해 중부선이 지금 작년에 착공을 했습니다. 그래서 대개시 한반도 종단 철도로 연결돼서 뭐 TSR 또 TCR 뭐 TMR까지 다 연결되는 하는 그런 기점이 바로 우리 포항 영일만항이 될 것입니다. 그래서 어 북미나 어 유럽 먼 곳은 어 영일만항이 부산항이 아니라 피드항이 될 수가 있고 특히 환동에의 하나의 그 거점항으로 역할을 찾는다면 어 굉장히 경쟁력이 있다 이렇게 생각합니다. Countries in East Asia began to grow interested in the changes the Northern Sea Route might bring. China and South Korea, having seen the research Japan conducted in the Arctic, have been ready to jump into this field. South Korea successfully built its first research purpose 7,000 ton icebreaker, intended for conducting studies in the polar regions. This is the first step for conducting research, but since cutting-edge technology has been applied to the construction of this research vessel, it has gained a lot of attention from polar scientists and researchers from around the world. The 여러 국가가 또그 부담을 안고 있는 것이 이제 북극의 그런 그 생태계 변화라거나 그래서 알아오는 이제 그 북극의 그런 그 환경 연구에 어 아주 주요한 어 그런 인프라로서 이제 그 특히 이제 국제 공동 연구를 통해서 어 국제 사회에 큰 기여를 할수 있다고 생각합니다. The melting of ice in the Arctic was like the opening of Pandora's box, bringing both hope and despair. As global warming melted ice along the northern sea route, Soviet President Mikhail Gorbachev announced in a political speech the opening of the maritime highway. Without Gorbachev's speech in Murmansk, the Russian Arctic, which constitutes nearly half of that northernmost ocean, would not have opened up. Gorbachev is currently a leader of the Green Cross International, an organization that brings awareness to the damage caused by global warming and seeks to prevent it. As the Northern Sea Route brings forth a new age without researcher studies of the Arctic Ocean, it would be hard to predict new sailing routes and the effects of climate change. A Canadian icebreaker, St. Louis, proceeds along the icy sea. Canada's Beaufort Sea is at the center of the changes happening in the Arctic Ocean. Scientists from five East Asian and North American countries are conducting research on changes to the ice. 
they are witnessing the sinking of islands such as Tuvalu in the Pacific Ocean. It looks like there's a, there's a broad peak from East Asian countries have no choice but to conduct research in the Arctic in order to prevent damage from global warming as well as to prepare for the new route. This is one reason a researcher from South Korea became in 2009 the first from her country to join a study by Canada and the U.S. analyzing seawater. They are studying changes in the Arctic Ocean through the analysis of phytoplankton. Four Japanese scientists are working on two projects related to ice in the Arctic Ocean. They use state-of-the-art devices to estimate the thickness and current conditions of the ice. Recently, China, which has been supporting more and more Arctic research, also sent its team. China is checking water conditions in the Arctic Ocean with light studies on the water. There is a veritable research race between the East Asian countries, which have realized the importance of the Arctic. This is the Arctic Ocean, and you can see that we have waters coming from both the Pacific via Bering Strait and the Atlantic through Fram Strait. And in the Canada Basin, these waters form layers determined primarily by their salinity. It is important to people who live in Canada and other countries such as Korea, China and Japan who are also Pacific nations. We are affected by, by global change together. This is Busan, South Korea. One deep sea fishing ship is ready for its voyage toward the South Pacific. Wee Shin Wan, who was hijacked by pirates in the Indian Ocean, is now ready to set sail. This time, the destination is the South Pacific. <laughs> we wonder if Mr. Wee's humble wish will come true this time. His ship starts its long voyage over the currents flowing from the Arctic, passing by Korea and Japan, and heading toward the South Pacific. This is the northernmost point of Europe, where the cold waters of the Arctic Ocean come and go. Murmansk, once a Soviet military base, is anticipating major changes from the northern sea route. The Lenin, the first nuclear-powered icebreaker, saw its heyday during the Cold War. Now it has become a tourist spot for newlyweds. Murmansk is a small city of just 300,000 people. But a new wind is blowing through this now civilian-dominated town that longs to shake off the economic effects of the global financial meltdown. Ironically, the crisis found along the southern sea routes are providing a convincing argument for opening up its northern counterpart. На обычных судоходных путях это в районе Аденского залива, это побережье Сомали, это вот южный регион, также Малакский пролив. Активность увеличивается и не только вот в районе Сомали, но и в районе Малакского пролива. То есть, если там будет ситуация ухудшаться, то, я думаю, трасса Северного морского пути в данном случае является более надежной и более предсказуемой. Наверное, пойдут судовладельцы и грузовладельцы на то, чтобы вложить больше денег в суда, построив суда ледового класса, чем каждый раз рисковать потерей груза или потерей экипажа. 
То есть я думаю, что это тоже как бы немаловажный фактор, который на, на будущее будет э, определенным образом действовать на активность или неактивность на трассе. It seems as if humans have run out of time for coming up with precautions on the environmental issues facing the Arctic. They have too little time to finish up environmental impact studies on any future northern sea route. Now, the most significant change in the Canada Basin and the Arctic Ocean is the significant decrease in ice extent. You can see by the different colors where the ice edge was in 1980, 1997, but now in 2007, it's a marked decrease. And this is affecting the waters north of Canada and Siberia. What will happen if we go on like this? Is it fine for us to use melting ice? いや、How much will interest from East Asian countries on the Arctic influence what actually goes on in the frozen north? These researchers and scientists are now standing on an ice flow in the Arctic to find clues to that question. Can scientists find crucial evidence for global warming in the Arctic Ocean? And if they can, what can they do to stop it? Can the melting Arctic ice bring a new maritime silk road to benefit humanity with minimal environmental impact? On the last day of the research team's study of Arctic ice, a family of polar bears suddenly appears near the Louise. Scientists found that they will be able to protect the habitat of these symbols of survival in the north? Or will seawater from the northern sea route engulf this place? Research ships will continue their voyages along these icy routes, seeking to find the answers. But there is little time, and yet so much to learn. <laughs>